Jackie Lee, baby. Hey, um, you know I love you. I put a Tennessee sweatshirt on on Carolina Duke day to day. So hey, that that's just I mean, for you. I know, and I can feel it. And if anybody knows you at all, they know <laughs> what a big signal of love that is. I got my I got my Carolina socks on, man. You know, I'm I'm, nah, I'm ready right. to go. I'm, I'm right. I'll put my game shorts on a little bit Where later. Are they it's gonna be today? Good. Is it at yeah. is it Chapel Hill? Oh yeah, Chapel yeah. Thrill, baby. Chapel Thrill, dude. You know, we I already think. we already took the game in Cameron this year. That was uh, that was nice, you know. I played a uh, dude. This was like back in 2011, but the only time I've ever played like Chapel Hill was we played like there's a tiny theater and I played opened up for Easton Corbin, and like I don't really have any songs that are like popping off now so can you imagine 2011 <laughs> no i don't know <laughs> and he took me there. With you or getting over you wasn't that a top 40 hit for you i mean it it literally went in at like 42 and exited at 40 so that's a top 40 <laughs> that's a top 40 to me i love that song i mean it, it did well like in spotify has like 50-something million streams, you know, which is, that's what kept us working. Because um, I remember, like, when Spotify, I was, like, pretty much the beginning of my radio tour when Spotify was a thing. And um, we were... That radio uh, tour video I just sent you. How funny is that, that I still dude, have that? It was amazing. It was amazing. <laughs> it was amazing. I was like, it's just you forget stuff like that and also just forget, like, how different our lives were. I mean... yeah. I yeah. live in the same city, you live in the same city, but like life was different, bro. Very different, very right? different. Was, but, I mean, you and, I, you and I have had like deep relationship talks at your house. We've had oh, deep yeah. relationship talks at my house. We've, it's just like, how just, I don't know. I mean, I, I know that's like, I know that's life. I know that's yeah. just progression. I know mm -hmm. it's, it's a lot of those things, but it's also God, I believe. You know what I mean? Of oh, all the, yeah. Mofos well, I could have known in this world. It's life if you're fortunate. You know what I mean? Like a lot of people go through this world and they feel so lonely. You know what I mean? So like I'm fortunate and I hope that you feel the same that that kind of turned into like a real friendship. So I know I can pick up the phone and I have picked up the phone and be like, hey, can you pray for this? Can you pray for that? But hey, but go back. I want to hear about the the getting over you story. I, I'm sorry. I interrupted and I, yeah, I really want to so hear that. We, we put it out and uh, I mean, that was the time people were like, oh my gosh, this song has been spun a million times on Spotify. And we're mm -hmm. like, what the hell does that mean? <laughs> you know, yeah. like there was, no, <laughs> yeah. there, was, there was no barometer. There was no like, like, okay. Cause I remember hearing stories about Spotify um, and I'm getting to my point, I guess, even specifically with Spotify. But I remember stories about Spotify that these bands, because they were paying out for their music these bands would like take five or six computers and program them to where it played their song on loop for like weeks at a time. And so oh, they'd wow. rack up hundreds, hundreds of thousands of views paying themselves yeah. because of the way it just, you know, that kind of thing. So Spotify, you know, being the wild west, if you will. Um, yeah. And then it turning from like, yeah. oh, wait a minute, like a million spins means this amount of people are actually listening mm -hmm. and it really dude i mean people like chance the rapper people like i mean it opened up a avenue i mean it was an avenue that people mm -hmm. could just like drive down so we um i told my dudes at the time and you know all my record label peeps and i got i got no beef with them at all but yeah uh, at the time it just man the older i get and i my my baby brother's like in the music business and now and he's songwriting and all that stuff and and he'll ask me questions it's not like i have like any profound advice by any mm -hmm. means but it is one of those things of like when you know who you are and you know where your boundaries are when someone steps over those boundaries mm -hmm. you know it's not okay and you also right. know when it's okay to sit the dog on them when they step over the fence <laughs> yeah and and I feel like it was one of those things of like, that was my biggest problem through all that getting over you stuff. And like, really just me as a person, like the guy that you met was, was the very in, in paragraphs of that chapter in his life. Because I, um, I do, I 
have really, really struggled with like confidence my whole life. And it's so stupid because I come from two very confident people. You know, my, mm -hmm. my mom was just unapologetically herself. And like, again, a magnet for, for people. And I always like made this, you know, weird equation in my head that like, if you're confident, you're an asshole. And that's just not the truth. And there are a lot of people that are confident and they flirt that line of cocky. But man, I'm so thankful that I have so many better examples of what it means to be beautifully confident, mm -hmm. know where your line in the sand is and being able to live your life. And I feel like that's when you really don't allow people like, I mean, friends, but also a record label, also yeah. a publishing company, mm -hmm. also radio people. Also, and dude, I, we've talked about this a million times and I will, I will say it until I'm blue in the face because it's worth saying. Yeah. I've met many, many wonderful people along the road. And then there are some people like in any business that leave you with not such a great taste in your mouth. And, you know, you just, you said something about being lonely. Um, Cause I know we all have seasons in your life. If you want to call it a season, it sounds very churchy for me to say, I feel yeah. like you're going through a season right now. Yeah, of, you're going uh, through a season, man. <laughs> um, I'm like, shut up, dude. It's like, was it fall? We go through the fall season, summer season. Yeah. Um, but people go through like times in their life where they feel lonely, but dude, and, and again, I, I know I've shared with you times I've felt lonely on, on a friend level yeah. and, and you've told me things, but here's, here's different to me. It's like, there's a reason people want to talk to you, G. There's a, there's a reason people want to do even this. There's a reason people want to like, you know, I love talking it up, playing basketball with you. And yeah. That's fun because that's like an extracurricular, like just also for the people at home. There's never going to be a time in my life, in my life, I'm going to beat Graham and Horse, Big, <laughs> Gun, 41. I, I don't know, maybe, one. maybe. But I'm just saying, it's like, I'm also a firm believer in reaping what you sow. Doesn't always look like the harvest you want. But I sound like Judah Smith right now. What am I doing? Hey, dude? that's a good thing. I talked to Judah this morning. So big shout out to uh, to my pastor and then someone that, that Jackie has some reverence for has come to church with me a few times, Mr. Nestor Judah Smith. We love you, buddy. Love you. Judah's always, he wouldn't know me from Adam, but Judah's always been unbelievably nice to me when I get to go to church with you. So I, I've played, I've played his, uh, your music for him. It's so cool, man. I, um, even with that, I know I'm like on 15 rabbit trails, but I remember, so I'm a PK. Mm -hmm. My dad's been a pastor. Um, Preacher kid for anyone wondering what a PK Preacher is. Kid, it's, yeah. yeah, it's not a. All the PKs, they know though. Yeah. All the real ones stand up. Yeah. Um, but I remember when I was on my radio tour, you know, and I heard all of these stories, if you will, about, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of different entanglements people got in. And again, this is all about my upbringing, not so much like myself in the moment, but yeah. I, one of my biggest things I was so excited about was um getting to go to all these churches of pastors that i respected yeah and dude judah was one and one of my closest like friends and family and they've just been always so kind to me is uh jensen franklin and his family yeah the jensen's yeah and it's so cool like over the years getting to to, to know them and they're very genuine people and they're very like I don't know, like, cause that's a, it's a whole nother world, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, but it's also like either you're fake or you're not. And right. They are not fake. And Judah is not fake. You no, know? nah, Judah's and the best, I remember, man. Uh, I had like an off Wednesday one time in Houston. And this is probably like hot take for a lot of people. I don't want to, you know, trigger anybody, but I had like a 45 minute Uber and I Ubered to Joel Osteen's church on a Wednesday. And. Oh, wow. It was. I was thinking like, you know, Wednesday and all that many people, I forget it's a basketball arena. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Joel Osteen doesn't do small uh, sermons. <laughs> Dude, I will say this. I was expecting, and I and I wasn't even like, I'm not even a cynic when it comes to Joel Osteen. Yeah. Um, I just like, my, my thing is with that too, it's like, if I don't agree with somebody, like I don't feel the need to tear them down. I just, you know, don't I yeah. either listen to them anymore, agree or it's just whatever. Mm -hmm. um, but I went there. And the amount of love, dude, I got touched more. When I mean touch, I don't mean like they came and laying on hands. I just mean like hugged and yeah. like asked if I wanted a coffee or asked if I wanted a, a pat on the butt, like whatever it was, dude. They were just yeah. like, it was very, it, it shocked me to be like so 
large, you know, you would think the distance is real, but like, dude, it wasn't, it was, it was amazing. And they, even at the end, they were like, cause I guess they turned the ca camera. All I've ever known of Joel Osteen is turning the cameras off when, you know, when it's over and I, I heard what I heard or listened on the radio, what I listened to. Yeah. And it's typically kind of short and sweet dude. Like after service, they were like, Hey, if you need prayer or if you need this, like come, come up. And he was there the whole time. And I was just, it's just cool to see behind mm -hmm. the, churchy curtain that we see yeah. a lot of times you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. again, again going back to judah it's like judah is like people are gonna you know throw rocks at things that shine for the for the rest of time for the long as we live yeah um and i i, I he's probably okay with that and I, I you know i'm okay with that but it's like man that guy's character is extremely high oh and man. that's yeah. what it's all about and dude same for you man that's like mm. <laughs> I want to be careful with because I'm no, I know I'm on record, but um, oh, yeah, man. <laughs> no, man. Today's about you, man. I let's catch up about you. And the well, last I'm thing just I'll saying, say, yeah, I'm just like, the reason that I want to talk to you because like yeah. you're my friend, like you're my. Yeah, I, I know course. for the rest of my life I'm gonna have to do work stuff, but like you're also yeah. like I, it's important for people to know that like you know the reason I know you have a gig and I know you got to do your job and we all do, we all do, but also it's like there's a fine line too that like is different and and for that fine line um the last thing i'll say about judah just just for you and anybody that that sees this and maybe is wondering you'd be surprised the toll that judah's job takes on him uh mm -hmm. because he he cares so much you know what i mean and like it's been really cool to be a part of his life and try to add value or be there to you know, fill his cup, support him, encourage him. But I mean, there's times where he'll put his phone down for days because he's he's trying to be there for so many people and he has nothing left, you know. Um, but I do, I'm inspired by how much he cares about his job and cares about Jesus. And like, it's pretty special. So I'm, I'm very fortunate to be friends with you, be friends with him. Like, it's, it's awesome. One of the cool stories he told, because I've been, what, five or six times with you to church? Like, yeah. Cause I, if I had, like, typically my L.A. trips go, every once in a while I'm there for, like, a whole week. But typically I'm there, like, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, go home mm -hmm. on a red eye. Shout out Davey Fisher. We love you, brother. Hey, Dave, 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 Dave. And I, I usually crash with you or Dave. That's, like, how yeah. it goes. Yeah. Uh, cause I'm, my cheap ass is too, <laughs> too cheap to buy a hotel. <laughs> We're figuring uh, it out, man. Um, but I, I, I would – Typically, if I could go to church with you, if it worked out that way, I would fly in on Wednesday, like yeah. kind of early evening, and I'd go straight to your place and hop in the car with you, and we'd go to church. Yeah. And I remember one time, speaking of like Judah having like a, you know, just a, a lot going on, um, we were talking, and he probably had like 45 other people that he could have talked to in that room, and he was just being kind to me. And um, I forget how the conversation got started, but he was like, I could tell there was some some wheels turning in his mind and he didn't know I was a PK. He didn't know. And even with my dad, it's like, you know, it's a completely different level, if you will. But, you know, a pastor goes through what pastors go through and yeah. you got your, your people. And I've seen that, that look a bunch. And we, we just talked and he said, yeah, man, you know, today, like I just had to, I left my phone at the house and he said, I went down to the beach and I swam to the buoy and back. Yeah, and I thought that that's so simple and silly, but I thought that was so awesome that he like, yeah, he literally went to the beach, you know, went looked at went looked at some you know God's creation a little bit. And was like, I'm gonna take a swim. He yeah, didn't say he nothing about having swimming trunks or anything <laughs> yeah. like that. He just like went for a swim, and I thought it was awesome. And I, I respect Man. God. I'm gonna see. I'm gonna see if we'll answer. I'm gonna hit him up real quick and see if he'll say what's up to us. He probably won't. This always backfires. People are like, oh, look at this guy pull out his phone. And then it's like, not, not, uh, not available. We'll see if he answers here. Um, but yeah, then let's get back to the music. Cause there's, there's some things that I'm just as your friend, somebody that I'm curious about. Absolutely. dude. And in my defense, it just says FaceTime. It doesn't say connecting. So it's not, <laughs> you know, it's not on me right now. <laughs> maybe, maybe I got the wrong number. Hey, you didn't, you didn't notice number. something, my dog. Oh, the dangle. I didn't notice the dangle. Oh, that, that's, trust me, that's in my note. I picked up my phone to make a note of it. <laughs> Courtney, uh, Courtney, of course, this is uh, my brother. He's like the, the jewelry guy and he looks really cool doing it. I do not. But like, kind of like, yeah, a, you know, I'm, I, this is about as dangle as I'm going to get. As a bet, I went and got my ears pierced and they, because they were like 
they didn't think I'd ever do. I don't have tattoos. I don't have, I don't yeah. wear rings. You know, I don't do any of that. A high fade is about as crazy as I get. And uh, I went and got my ears pierced and they were like, that's fake. I was like, pull it. And it was not fake. So I, I don't ever really wear an <laughs> earring anymore, but like I still have the hole, you know? So every once in a while I'll get crazy. And Courtney was like, take that out. Take it out. <laughs> Uh, you know, it's growing on me a little bit. It's got a little swag to it. <laughs> hey, well, so, you know, I was lucky enough to be in Nashville and hang out with you. You talked about getting over you. Uh, where are we at with the new stuff, man? You, I feel like you're feeling good about it. Like, what's, I am, where, where are we at? Let's do a health check. I'm feeling pretty good. And it's, and, you know, I am excited about the songs, but I'm just more excited that I'm excited. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, that feels, that feels good, dude. I mean, it's, mm -hmm. I probably haven't felt this way since, you know, 12 years ago when, 18 year old Jackie rolled into town and you know guns are guns are blazing and that's like that's a true statement and I feel like um so the reason my brother's in town this week and this is why things are different too and that like again it all sounds probably a to you like it makes sense like oh your brother sings he's sang with you your whole life why wouldn't you always have him sing harmony on your project mm -hmm. yeah. and you get to the machine and if you don't know who you are you allow people to uh run the machine for you and so this go around everything is different in a way we're still doing technically the same things but everything's different and to me it's one of those deals where so with kenzie being here like we you were here when we cut the songs yeah and leading up to that was months and months and months of like what are we gonna do what are we gonna do and then we got in there that day and dude it was all hands on deck it was ashley paul myself you know we're all just like okay, what if we did this? What if we did this? What if we did this? And like, that was a very different experience for me every other time I've ever been in the studio. And coming from a place of me, of like I told you with the confidence, you know, I have all these old men telling me they know better. And then also just me walking in with a preconceived notion that they did know better. And that was yeah. out of respect. It was not like out of like a place of, I, my way or the highway it was yeah. out of perspective like oh these dudes have been here doing this for a long time i need to i need to adhere i need to listen i need to but dude there's a fine line too of like you got to know what you want you got to know and i didn't know what i wanted and i was just kind of a puppet you know and so this time around man i'm so thankful that you were there you got to see a little mm -hmm. bit i'm so thankful that for for me being able to share my ideas and Ashley Gorley, all those other old men I talked about mm -hmm. in my life for the past, you know, 12 sure. years, dude, he has more success than all of them combined. Yeah. And it talks about his character too. And if, if anyone's listening, you like country music at all, I promise you there's an Ashley Gorley song that you like. You know what <laughs> yeah. I mean? Like, yeah. Statistically you, speaking. <laughs> you probably heard one today. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but, um, because I think he, he's about to celebrate his 55th number one. And that's number ones, bro. That's not including, like, the top tens, the top fives. You know what I mean? I remember when I was uh, – when I first moved to town. He's up for songwriter of the year again. Like, uh, you know, I just – 31 to eight day. times. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's crazy. That's crazy. <laughs> um, but with that being said, I wasn't intimidated by him. I was inspired yeah. by him. You know, because I, I was coming out of time in my life when he first like hit me up. It's like, what are you doing with your life right now? I was like, I don't know. And I was, I went through where I, I, I would walk by the piano, I would walk by the guitar, and I'd pick it up for like months because I was just like, I don't feel inspired. I feel like every other person on Instagram is like sitting in front of their camera, just being like, I wrote this song. It was like, and it made me want to throw up. I was like, I hate this. I hate, yeah. I hate the way I'm about everything. And so being with him and Paul, dude, Paul's one of my best friends. And I've always been able to say what I need to say to him, vice versa. But, uh, and I trust that guy too. I mean, he does, he's done, I was the first guy he ever produced anything on. And since then, he's had like five or six number ones as a producer. So, yeah, for anyone that doesn't know Paul, also just uh, uh, like I would say, you've got a dream team with you. So that's, that's pretty I'm impressive. Pretty which, and I know you're grateful, but it, it, you know, just like anything and the way the things that you tell me, it speaks to who you are and, and people want to work with you. And, people that uh, are successful enough that they get to choose who they work with. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like they yeah, don't. I mean, <laughs> talking about feeling blessed, it's like, man, I'm telling you, I wish I had like some sort of statistic sheet in front of me of like, 
of Ashley Gorley's breakdown because the way he's been successful versus even other really successful people in our business, mm -hmm. it's almost as if, and I say this respectfully, but it's almost as if the, like the Powerball lottery has been as big as it's ever been. And he's hit it three times. You know what I mean? Like that's like, <laughs> yeah. that's, yeah. His, that's the statistic sheet of how well he's done now. Yeah. It all has to do with him, his talent, his perseverance, because that was, again, the biggest thing for me when I went through that phase of not being able to look at a guitar or piano, I didn't want to sing. I didn't want to do anything. Working with him again, seeing that I have not had a millifraction of success as this guy's had. And he is as hungry as the day that he got here. Yeah. And I was like, damn, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. Damn, like what in the world was I thinking during that time of like, you know, not wanting yeah. to pick a guitar. And I'm glad for my process, but being around him just, cause we all can get tired. We all can get burned out with, but like there's a, what keeps you going? What keeps you like wanting to do it? So that's been the best thing about working with Ashley is obviously he's talented. Obviously he knows what's up. He literally like low key, probably every label would jump through their butt to like do anything with him. Yeah. And that's just because of like, but also he's not, he's not with them. He, he wants to like, make sure it's like a, a good process and a good like business decision as opposed mm -hmm. to, Oh, it looks really shiny. And man, I have fallen for the, it looks really shiny plenty of times in my career, in my life, you know, mm -hmm. and that's okay to do like when it's right. But when it's not right, it ain't right. Why would you do it? Yeah. Man, that's incredible. When uh, do you think we'll be able to hear some of this stuff? Now, I'm, I'm fortunate. I've heard some of it. But well, let's say you're going to hear it before everybody else hears it. Okay. But, um, <laughs> we're looking. So Kinsey dropped all his harmonies this week. And Paul, he called me yesterday. He is in, uh, he's out of town until Sunday. He's working on another project right now, too. Uh, Lauren Elena stuff. And uh, so he's trying to get like the in-studio stuff with Lauren tied up. And then I'm thinking probably Wednesday to, to probably Friday of next week, he, that's when he'll finish doing his, uh, his part. And then he'll send it off to master or mixing. Mm -hmm. Once the, once the mixing comes back and we like it off to mastering. And so, I mean, we're, we're looking like two weeks, maybe. Nice. Uh, so, cause I'm not sure when this will get loaded, obviously in the next few days, but, yeah. uh, tentatively, if we could put a date on it, cause I would love to circle back. And I'd also, I, I want to know, like, you know, what does Jackie Lee do on the night it gets loaded to Spotify? Like, is don't do you pay go, attention to nothing. No. All right. Go play, go play basketball. <laughs> and what's your status playing basketball? I know that the, my friends who love you, they, they, you have now probably yeah, moved ahead you. of me and the people they love, but. Uh, they're going to want to know your status because I shared that you might be out for a while and they, they were not loving that. Well, so my stubborn East Tennessee, but I've yet to go to the doctor. I've talked to uh, a lot of doctors without diplomas. It's like I like to call them. Yeah. yeah. Um, it was the weirdest deal, man. We um, first game and dude, you know me, like I'll go for hours. Like I will yeah. play. Yeah. I will just play and play and play and play and play. And I'll, I'll listen to my body, but like, I'm very fortunate. I don't really get hurt ever. Um, it's just what it is. First game, dude. And I've never had anything like this happen, but first game we were, um, it was like, it was a night too. We had some, we had some good ballers out there and we were like, yeah. even that was intense. Um, and I, we were, it was like low score at the time. It was like either, you know, five to six, something like that. You know, your boy already hit a three. He just is already. Yeah, you know, your boy uh, got in early. Uh, 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 you know what I mean? <laughs> um, and we go, I get a defensive rebound and I outlet to, uh, I think maybe James or whoever it was. And mm -hmm. they go to, and he's flying down the court and someone missed a layup. And I'm about at half court at this point. And another friend hit the ball, like punched it to, to you know, out the ball to get a yeah. rebound. Sure. And so it literally like a softball just came down. Like I was about to catch a fly ball and I just literally moved forward to jump at it. And when I did, and I was just like, it all happened really fast. And I don't know if you ever had like an injury like that, but it all happened really fast. And I was, um, it didn't hurt. And I, I thought someone stepped on my foot. Like when I tried to jump, I just thought someone stepped on my heel or my leg or whatever. 
-hmm. And then I looked around and no one was around me. Mm. And I just started going, no, 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 you know? Yeah. And I was like screaming on the ground. And all the dudes, like we had the music, you've been there, you know. Yeah, music's going, yeah. Music's going, and it was louder than all that. And and uh, there was one dude, uh, Willie was sitting out that game, and he uh, he immediately was like, his eyes looked like he's seen a ghost. And everybody stopped. And because I'm not coming coming to, I'm like, oh my God, that sound was my leg. This was that, you know, I'm putting the pieces together in my mind. And again, I wasn't hurt. Like it, it didn't, it wasn't painful, but it like burnt from my calf to my, my heel. Mm -hmm. I was like, man, like I really did this. And I thought yeah. I broke my Achilles or whatever. And so they helped me to the bench and I'm just more like frustrated. And they're like, we're going to go to the ER. Da, 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 da. I was like, no, we're not. I said, the only thing I need you guys to do right now is play basketball. Cause I hate, like, I hate, yeah, people, yeah. you know what I mean? I hate yeah. And I was yeah. like, please. And they kept saying, no, 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 let's go to the ER. I was like, no, let's go. That's, I said, play. That, that's where we differ. Uh, guys, is this going to be all right? Take me to the hospital. Like, is, is this going to be okay? That's where we, that's where me and you part ways, brother. <laughs> Well, I wouldn't care about nobody's fun at that point. Like, no, guys, come on, please don't. Not like, not now. That's hilarious. I'll tell you how redneck I am. So I got ice on it pretty quick, and I'm just kind of chilling with my leg up, kind of like I am right now. And I noticed, like, um, you know, I was moving my toes, started there, and then I started, like, rolling my ankle. And then I started moving my ankle back and forth, like, pretty much, like, however I wanted to. It wasn't like it was limp, you know? Right. And I was like, there's no way it's my Achilles. If I'm moving my foot, it's not my Achilles, you know? And also I've heard yeah. of just the unbelievable pain that people are in when they rip their Achilles. Yeah. I mean, Tyler Hubbard told me, he was like, he knew immediately, like it was, it like rolled up the back of his leg. Yeah, exactly. And so but I really couldn't feel the Achilles. It was a little bit mush, mm -hmm. but I was like, there's, there's no way, like it totally tore. Like I, this, there's no way. Yeah. And I, again, not a doctor, not a PT, not any of that, but, um, you know Nick Donnelly? Yeah, love Nick. Uh, I mean, yeah, I he wasn't there the last time I saw him, but we, we're, we're Insta friends now. Nick, if you see this, you're the man. He and your team, your, your team really missed you. Dude, bro, we <laughs> – I've told him – so I've talked to him a bunch in the last, like, couple of weeks because he, he did – the reason he's not played in a while is he did the same thing. Oh, and, I didn't know that. Yeah, that's a shame. anyway, it was one of those deals where he thought he tore his Achilles, all this stuff. And uh, really, his buddy's like a doctor, and he was like, well, good news is, after they finished that game, he goes, good news is, you're not going to the ER tonight, because the doctor friend was like, you know, if it's snapped, you got to have surgery anyway. If it's not, yeah. then you need to see if it tightens up. And so, again, my East Tennessee butt, we, I got my truck, okay, 76, Ford yeah. F-250. Yeah, plus. power windows, power windows. You know? Yeah, power, power windows. You got to eat your protein power to get that power down. Yeah. And um, – I go while they're playing. I'm like, I gotta run to my truck real quick. Run to my truck because I didn't want to leave my truck down there. And I drove the truck around the barn just to see if I could. And um, I was like, we got done with the ball, and I stayed till they finished. I was like, okay, who's driving you home? I was like, I'm driving me home. They're like, what? I said, I'm fine. I'm driving me home. And so because Ashley had brought down some crutches at this point, and I, I had a boot at the house that you know from like a, an old injury. Yeah. Yeah. And so, anyway, I was like, I'm, I'll be fine. And, dude, it's been uh, a week and a day, and, like, I can I can walk. I, I'm not doing, like, too much, but I can walk around the house. Uh, I am definitely looking at a good – I want to take it real slow getting back. I'm looking at a good five to six weeks of yeah. not being able to play basketball. But yeah. Don't mean I don't have to get shots up. Don't mean I don't yeah. have to – I, I hey. want the Bulls, dude. I would love if it was, like – and I don't know, like, their schedules with – wives and work and all that stuff man it would be epic if they could make it like if we even if we did it like three times a year that would be yeah sick. they well they've had that conversation uh just to backtrack a little bit if i had known that you had that boot i would have had you go get it for willie the last time i was there <laughs> oh you gotta do willie dirty like that dude oh god Oh, Willie. Putting him, oh, my, you just got him in 4K, my friend. <laughs> really and I only, here, he's not even here to defend himself. <laughs> no, I only say that because Willie's the man. He wasn't there the first time, man. I really like that guy. He's dude, Willie, he super fun. Willie is so good at ball, and he's a great dude, and he's, yeah. he's we love having him around. He's like a, a kind of more recent addition 
Uh, yeah. Gator, Gator knew Willie, and because Gator's mm-hmm. uh, Willie's a California boy, and he was like, uh, "Hey, we we're running low one night." He's like, I asked my friend Willie, and Willie came mm-hmm. out, and dude, Willie, he's he's he can school. play. Dude, he's, yeah, he's man, he can play. Dude, um, if we, we would have had. Yeah, go ahead. I'm just saying, if we would have had Nick, and and because Jared Jared Holly did good, um, and then you know Ben Ben is like Ben's a great athlete, but Ben has been hurt for like nine months. Sure. Yeah, he's been injured. Like the two times I've been there, he's been injured. And he's not been able to get shots up, like literally for uh, over a year. And he, he kept apologizing. Like, bro, there's no reason to apologize. Like we just like, you yeah. know, we had other issues other than like not being able to score. But man, you know who's really good is Trip. I lo- I love Trip's game. Dude, Trip, Trip's, Trip's is game too. We, yeah, Trip's great. The first time also, Trip came out, he um, I mean, he wasn't like he was. You can tell he's a, a good ball player. But he wasn't Lanco. like people, um, people that are watching this trip from Lanco. Yeah, he, he's yeah, yeah. yeah, he's the man. He he wasn't like killing it necessarily, but mm-hmm. I mean, he wasn't like also like oh this guy sucks by any means. Um, but he even said he goes man, he played ball forever and play. And so the next time, ever since like that, he got that first one out of the way, dude. He has been balling, dude. He can yeah, be yeah. He dotted my eye one time on a three. I was like, wait a minute. Yeah, it was nice. I I even told him later. I was like, yo, that was a nice move, man. I I I'm. You know, I hated it, but I appreciate it. <laughs> I respect it, but I hated it. <laughs> yeah. And then Gorley dotted my eye one time, too. I, uh, you know, he didn't play last time, but Gorley's got a nice little jumper on him. Dude, he does. I'm telling you, that that guy has, you know, 50-something number ones, you know, a beautiful indoor basketball court, all this stuff. But, like, the thing he loves more than – he loves his family, and he loves basketball, and he loves music in that order. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, I'm appreciative that uh, that he let me come play. and. Uh, Kane Brown, actually, he got hot the last time I was there. His little pull-up game, man. He's got a nice little jump shot when he gets it going. He d- Dude, the story of the day, though, is John Party almost dying. Like, I got a lot of calls on that because people, you know, I teased it. We talked about it on the podcast, and people reached out because they saw his story. And they're like, <laughs> bro, are you were you really a part of that? I was like, I wasn't. I, I personally wasn't. But, yeah, I was there when it happened. He texted me probably – and I love to read John Party's text in the same way that he talks. Yeah. And he was like, man, I, man, I had a lot of fun today. <laughs> man, I had a lot of fun today. I hope we can do that again. I was like, you did? <laughs> yeah. You had a lot of fun today? That's crazy. <laughs> man, it's awesome, that community that y'all have built. Um, you know, man, it's all Ashley, dude. You Ashley, like, allowing that to happen, like, you know, a, a lot of times – Nashville, um, I will say Nashville is way better than any other city I've been to, um, and I'm probably biased, but anywhere you go, you know, you can kind of get into the click, if you will, you know, mm-hmm. and yeah. Ashley has bred a culture of it's like everyone's welcome. You know, I always try to be respectful because he kind of put me in charge of getting all the dudes there and stuff. But it's definitely I know there was like, like 25 people there the first night you and I played. Dude, and that was luckily, man, that luckily was, we, we didn't lose though. Luckily we didn't yeah, lose. Yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> I was like, because Gator was like, if we want to play basketball, we can't lose. <laughs> and I was like, I know, yeah. I know. <laughs> um, but yeah, so he uh just allowing people to to come and 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 he is as nice of a guy as he is a talented guy. And so yeah, it's been a it's been great. Dude, we've been playing ball. He had an OG court out his his old house up in Goodlettsville, but it was mm. outdoor court. Outdoors, you know, yeah. If it like we're like okay we're playing ball at seven right, so we all go and in, in Tennessee in the summer it's like you have a seventy five degree, you know beautiful day all day and then at like five thirty might rain, and it's yeah. like on the forecast so we'd get halfway there and it start raining we'd just be like no because you couldn't play on that court if it rained at all. So yeah. him, having, him having the indoor court is pretty clutch. All right, well I'm gonna transition just a little bit. So we talked about new music, we talked about hoops. There's room here. So when the album comes out, when you put out an album, there is room here for someone that never comes to play ball that this might get covered up if this person doesn't start showing up. I don't know. You know, if you want to, if you want to touch on that. You say what, what wild is right now? It's wild that a man that talks like he's the best basketball player ever has yet to ever show up to anything. That's what's wild. That's a wild. Hey, right there. I'm going to go ahead and tell you though. And he'll never see this because, you know, I love Kip Moore. Kip is a buddy of both of ours. Um, but I would bet 
my podcast. Uh, we used to, you know, we've done several radio interviews and we've done life together for a long time. And, and we talk on the phone every once in a while. But I'll bet every cent that I have in this house right now that he's never heard one thing that I've ever done. <laughs> <laughs> like podcast, anything, like nothing. You know what? <laughs> not you're one, probably, not you're one probably second. Surprised? You're probably surprised because really, I feel like he's probably like a really well informed. How do I say this? I think his mystique comes from not caring in the good ways. Yeah, right? where it's like he he does his thing. He 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 has his people. He does his thing, and and again in a really good way. I, I love I love about him that he is who he is. Like he, Kip Moore is Kip Moore. No one is changing Kip Moore. Oh, dude! Like I I know we we talk about Kip, and I've I've texted him a million times and all this stuff. I have nothing but mad respect for the guy. Like yeah, career wise, like and dude, he's a good ball player too. Like we know. Yeah, that. he's got it. He does have a, a jumper, but we want to see him out there on the court. I played with him one time. Uh, I, I played with him a couple times. But I played with him one time out at so in the summer around here, like one of our in twelve South. There's a court. And oh yeah, y'all sent me a video of it, dude. It's it's like it's pretty. It's, we we have some good games out there. Um, I got a knife pulled on me on that court one time too. But me and <laughs> me and Ben did. Me and Ben did. And I like my my goofy butt. I was like, "What are you gonna do with that knife?" I was like, "Oh wait, he could actually do something with that knife." Yeah, you know? he, he might stab you. Yeah. And so we left. Like right, Jared Holly was there too, dude. Ask him. Anyway, yeah. um, Kit was out there shooting. And I walked on the court and I said, well, well, well. <laughs> he's like, he just dropped his head and did one of these because he lives kind of, I think, close over there. And uh, we played two on two. He and I were on the same team. And we played two on two. And we did beat this, like these, I mean, they, they were probably kids. They were probably like, you know, le- you know 19, 20. But we yeah. did beat them. And I was like, okay, keep, keep him ball. He knows, he knows what's up. He knows what's yeah, up. Yeah, I can tell he can play. I don't want to give him you know, too much props, but you can tell by the way he shoots and like kind of just the way he talks and stuff that he's he got some game on him. He the ball between his arm, arms and squeezes it. He just flexes and squeezes that mug in there. Yeah. <laughs> we were, I know you've heard this story. It's just one of my favorites. After the first time you and I played and we had been talking about ball forever and Kip didn't show up. Like we, you know, I was texting him, you were texting him and I had a decent, I had a decent day. I get a call the next day after the game was like, Hey, I heard you went and played ball, man. I said, yeah, I texted you. Like, why didn't you come? He was like, oh, blah, blah, blah. And we didn't, we didn't say much about it. Fast forward, like the next day, I was in town for the CMAs, I think, or, or eight or CMA Fest. And uh, I was at the airport and I run into him in security, which is crazy. The Nashville airport, I guess you see everybody. Oh, you see everybody. Absolutely. And we're walking to the gate and we're chopping it up. And, uh, He's talking trash about you, you know. He's like, nah, you know, Jackie wants wants to play me. I don't, you know, I don't even know. I don't even know if I put my shoes on for Jackie, blah, blah. And he looked at me and he goes, you know, maybe we'll get out there. And I just looked at him back and said, Yeah, you're gonna have to lace your shoes up when you play me. <laughs> I'm telling you right now, I would get a GoFundMe. I would do whatever I had to do. I would pay. There needs to be like there needs to be a purse, bro, for you and Kit playing ball because it would be – people would watch that. I'm telling you, I would get an audience going. No, it would be man. amazing. And I mean I, that in a way of, like, watching you embarrass him. No, man. I love that guy. But I do, too. Uh, I do. All right, so to end this, since we're talking about basketball and you're a very – you're a three-point shooter. People that don't know, you've got you've got the range, you know, especially when my buddy Hal is guarding you. Only Hal's guarding me. That's the only yeah. time I got range. <laughs> you were talking about guys, and Hal and I do this, like, once a week, and we do – you know, we talk about music and artists and, and songs that you know, you want to start listening to an artist. And we're, we're actually going to do you pretty soon. Um, you were talking about – guys that have confidence but walk that thin line man he walks that line he walks that line how has been so you know just knowing what i know of how i feel like i feel like i know him way better than i actually know him you know yeah and that's one of those deals because of all those guys man they're yeah. all just they're great dudes and yeah you know i feel like also knowing you it's like i got to even know you a little bit better by knowing them yeah of course you know what i mean like i, yeah. I knew graham in la and that's that's not the gram they know, you know. No, I mean? that's not the gram they know. Yeah, <laughs> so it's been really cool for me. And now, especially like you know, we all have each other's numbers. We all text, whether it's you know talking talking smack or just like doing what we do. But uh, 
they're great dudes. You know what I mean? And even down to the talking so much smack, um, you know, we, we do all that. And then when they found out I was hurt, they're all like, yo, man, you good? You know, that kind of stuff too. You know what oh, I mean? Cool. It's just yeah. it's different. But also I, I feel like the best part of, of, of how and all that, it's like, it brings out a side of me that I don't see often. Yeah. And I love it. <laughs> There's like yes. this like silent, you know, thing that, you know, I, I love to be who I am, but then like, I'm hella competitive. Yeah, and you are. So, it like even with uh when I, we play I mean you, just for the record everybody listening Graham's team smacked <laughs> everybody and when I say smacked I mean I didn't I didn't do anything like honestly, the first I game I ended up being close ish because I got lucky with some shots on how when I saw that like none of our guys were like because we didn't have any scores I'm not a scorer like I'm my first thought every time is pass 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 facilitate nobody you guys jumped up it was like 17 to 2 like Ricky wasn't hitting like Ben wasn't hitting Jared you know Gator and so I was like I'm gonna have to shoot the ball and like dude I could tell how tasted blood and he his fingers was in my nose holes and so like <laughs> yeah. those shots that I made like bro I'm telling you because I I think I hit like four in a row four you hit four in a row yeah but and it I was remember, all because I, I was like, like I had to do it I had yeah. to do it. Like, I had no – now, the best part of the whole day was when I packed. And that was like – because I also let everybody know he was dot mine. Like, he hit, like, three or four within the first three or four possessions. I, I hate giving him – I love giving him credit, but I also hate it is, man, all day he was on fire. He was making those baseline threes like they were nothing. Tough. Dude, I mean, it was – I told him, I was like, if their eyes are on the front of the rim, I was like, they it's too late. Like, you've got to – get don't let their eyes focus on the rim because if it's yeah that's how well they're shooting anyway the whole thing was like but i clicked into this thing that i hadn't clicked into like i never click into that really when we're playing like yeah i'm very like you know i love to to win and all that but like you do you know it's all it is what it is we play ball a couple times a week it's just what it's just fun when that happened when we jumped down that much like 17 to 2 or 0 or whatever it was i was yeah. like no i gotta do something about this yeah, and I mean, yeah. The I, first game was close. The first game was it wasn't close. Was a game winner. It wasn't really close. I mean, like we we brought it to like be a little closer, but it wasn't close. Like I mean, morally, you guys. I mean, we were buried. Like we had. No, no, I think it ended up being 25-21, I think, and games are to twenty four. If anybody watches, yeah. it was the first one. You know, you guys, you guys. It was close. We we jumped out early and it, it got close. But anyway, the point of this is so. Let me. I would love to close this out uh, with. We'll, we'll do Jackie Lee for three. So we'll do three questions. We'll do three categories. Like I'll, I'll ask you a question. You're going to give me three answers. You cool with that? Beautiful. All right. So um, three best bars in Nashville for Jackie Lee. Anyone visiting Nashville? Cause all my boys want to go back, but they're like, man, will you take us to some bars, man? I'm like, yeah, we'll, we'll figure it out. Scoreboard. Okay. Uh, also the boys love scoreboard. It's uh, cause okay. it's not, it's like a little off the beaten path a little bit. Um, that's more of like a, a regular, like, okay, we can go have a good time for a while. Um, famous bars, my fa like fa favorite famous bar would be Roberts. Okay. It's like two doors down from Tootsie's, but like it's, yeah. it's a lot. We've of been history. there. Yeah. We've been so there. It's great. With Roberts too. Like the cool thing about it is like when you're playing the Ryman, like the Opry at the Ryman, you walk out the mm -hmm. back door. Cause that's where you have to go in and out of the time for artists. Mm -hmm. And yeah. literally like you can touch it with both hands. You walk into Roberts. And it yeah, is that's awesome. Awesome. And I've done that a handful of times. And then, um, and I, I'll, I'll say it like this. It, it has been, it's not really anymore, but it has been. And when, you know, the, the thing you said about the airport in Nashville, mm -hmm. for anyone listening, if you want to connect, and I mean with anybody, all walks of life. I mean, you have the top of the top, as in like head of A&Rs, head of record labels, to a brand new songwriter. It does not matter. Red Door in Midtown. And I know you've been there. But like, I, I have. It's so weird that like. People tell me I've been there. It, that's, why, that's how it goes most times. It's like, I love and I hate that place so much. And I feel like a lot of people will probably say that. I haven't been in a really long time. But it's a very love-hate relationship because of two reasons. You see everybody you know. And you see everybody you know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. All right. Three songs you can't get out of your head right now. That you're loving. I know that's tough. I'm Mama's Boy. Four. Okay. Rainy. Yeah. Um, 
who was crazy. I mean, I know you know this, but, you know, Paul obviously played the keys in our church. <laughs> yeah, dude, I, I met him that one night at church, and he was super yeah. nice. Yeah. Um, Mandolin Orange, she only holds me in her arms. When she, or it's, it's called When She's Feeling Blue, Mandolin Orange. They're, they're close to, to you guys. They're kind of yep. like an Americana kind of deal. Yeah, I always hear, uh, always hear people put them on uh, their sunset stories. Meshes really well. Dude, it's, it's a sunset story kind of vibe. Is it and not? I, I've, listened, I've listened to them many, 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 many times uh, while I'm in Santa Monica. Yeah. Um, trying to think. Uh, song that I, I want to name like a current song that I'm digging. It doesn't have to be current. It could be anything. I'll say this. I'm really, really, really excited about the Kings of Leon new record. Because mm -hmm. uh, my one of my favorite songs is Wait For Me, Kings of Leon. Yeah. Man. And so Kings of I'm, Leon and Mumford and Sons, both those those bands, they they go hand in hand with me. I I, I just I go back and forth with those two. So I'll, I'll say that I'll say those three songs because that's kind of right. like, kind of covers everything that I, I love too. And somewhere in there, I find country music. I'm not real sure. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, three uh, country artists that you're that you're loving or excited about. Kane. It's hard because uh, you because you have so many you know friends in the business. So I know I'm yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm putting you in a bad spot here. No, 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 no not at all. I, anything Sam does. Yeah, I mean, that guy is, you know, I, there's a lot of being able to kind of over the last few years, like I've known him for a while, but like being able to really know him and mm -hmm. I always I never tried to judge people before I knew him anyway. You know, you hear a million things. Yeah. Um, Sam Hunt. Sam Hunt. Who he's talking Sam about, Hunt. And dude, he is he is beyond the real deal. He is beyond yeah. the real deal. And dude, some of the new stuff he's working on is really good. And it's really so, good. I, you know, you, you mentioned, you know, the guys, my, the boom boys, the, the boys from Watauga County. And I mean this in all due respect to Sam because they, they all love Sam Hunt now, you know, like once you get, if you're ever fortunate and blessed enough, and I know there's a lot of Sam Hunt fans that, that will never get the chance to spend time with him. And that, that's a shame because he's an incredible human being. But my boys were like, man, yeah, that'd be cool. Like, you know, I was like, if Sam Hunt plays, like there's a bunch of artists, you guys, you'll, you'll know, like, it'll be fun, man. You guys will have a good time. And they're like, oh, cool. And in the most respectful way, they didn't really care that Sam Hunt was there because they didn't listen to Sam Hunt's music. And so I heard one of them say this. They're like, man, when we rolled up today, there wasn't a Sam Hunt fan in this car. And when we left, all of us, all we wanted to do was play Sam Hunt's music because they're like, we love him. And so, Fast forward, they started paying attention to Sam, and I would get random texts like he posted um, some bluegrass stuff. And his brother-in-law, who comes plays basketball with sometimes, is big bluegrasser. So I would get random texts from people, and I'm not saying they're haters, but you got to understand they're coming from a place of not listening to Sam Hunt. So any kind of compliment is like well earned, and. I got several texts from several different, several different people at several different times saying, yo, I, man, I'm late to the party, but Sam is incredibly talented. Like I don't listen to all of his stuff. That's not really my personal, but it's undeniable how talented he is as an artist, the things that he's able to do, which I thought was really, well, really he's, cool. He's going to be one of those guys that in the exact same story you just told about the boom boys that, came out with a stigma, right? That he's mm -hmm. pop or whatever you want to call it. And then I remember this with Rascal Flatts. Like, you know, when Rascal Flatts came out, they were just a boy band, pop band, whatever. And then over time, like you go back and listen to that first stuff, especially it's like, that's country's cornbread, dude. It's like, right. Mm -hmm. With yeah. Sam, Sam is going to keep, and Sam doesn't need validation from, you know, anybody. He just is going to be no, himself. Yeah. Yeah. But it's going to be over a period of time all the people that like either didn't get it at first, didn't respect it at first, didn't want any part of it because all the teeny boppers loved it at first. It's, he's literally going to over time win everybody over because they're going to realize, yeah. man, this guy's actually really good. Man, 2016 might be a top five country song of oh, my dude. lifetime. I, I can't get enough of that song. And obviously I know a little backstory to it, but I just, I just think that that song is crazy special. And people forget too, man, that he like moved to town. He was wearing um, Lou Casey's and a big old cowboy yeah. hat. Like he really was. Like that's what you know. Yeah. And they kind of helped shape a little bit more in his sound, but nonetheless, it's like that's still who he is. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, I love 
country music and I grew up on country music and my dad and I built my first car, but, and I, so I feel pretty good about the roots that I have in country music, but I don't wear Lou Casey's and a cowboy hat. Don't make me any less country. So I, I never, you know, that, that never, that was never anything that I had. I mean, I, I love wearing long t-shirts and me and Sam, we see, you know, we see eye to eye. Cuts, baby. Those long- <laughs> That's right. Oh yeah. Did those guys ever get those things? So I t- Sam's not going to be back until the end of March. And I was like, yo, you know, Graham, whatever. He's like, cool, cool, cool. I'll grab it when I get back kind of stuff. So, well, hopefully he likes them. Uh, yeah, yeah. Those guys, again, those guys were so, so cool to let me come play uh, like a lot. Like I've been there a few times now and I'm glad oh, they let he, me come back. No, don't even, bro. They, whenever I even hint that Graham might be in town, they're like, what day? Let me clear the calendar. What day? That? They oh all, man, that's nice. Man, even not really, they want a piece. They just love playing with you so much, dude. Even Willie? You know what? I'm going to need to seek Willie's uh, counsel before I give a response, dude. He might want to word that. His lawyer might want to word that a little different. <laughs> All right. So you got Kane who, uh, you know, obviously, I don't know him as well as I know Sam, but Kane, he's always been crazy kind to me. And, and I've got to be kind of buddies with him during the hoop thing. Uh, easy, easy guy to love. Seems like just an amazing human being. Uh, you mentioned that you were excited about him. Has he got some stuff coming down the pipes or something? Yeah. I mean, I know that, like, uh, Snow, Ernest, whatever everybody calls him now, he's had, like, 15 yeah. days since he's been here. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> uh, Ernest is, like, really – man, he's got his finger on the pulse of what's happening right now, you know? Right. I know that the Morgan Wallen stuff was a hot take, and it, it is what it is, but Ernest also wrote a bunch of that stuff. And yeah. um, Ernest has written a lot of Kane stuff that's about to come out whenever that comes out and oh incredible and then the russell dickerson record dude is girl i was we went to tr's house um i guess last weekend when davy was in town Mm -hmm. and uh and then we ended up all i mean again i'm almost by myself being more biased to not necessarily people that i know but people i know their character you know what i mean sure of course And and that's probably but also it's like it's good it's really good you know yeah, so I, I need to go back and, and re-listen to the Russell album. I, you know, I've I've been late to the party on that, um, but I need to, I was too. to dedicate I was more too. time. Yeah, dude, I'm, if I'm being honest, it's like not out of a, I don't know, not out of like a jealous or out of a. There was times in my life that was that way, but mm-hmm. almost in the last, dude, when Davey was in the car, I was like, "What are you listening to?" And he played me Logan Myers, one of his songs, and I hadn't talked to Logan in years. And I'm sure he played grew apart. I'm sure he played grew apart. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, you know, I always forget like, you know, even Davey, for example, you know, Davey's a dude that lives in Santa Monica. Like, you mm-hmm. know, we, we see each other a few times a year and like we, we talk a bunch, but like, I forget that he really loves country music, you know, and, and yeah. he just went down these lists and he played like 12 songs I've never heard before. And yeah. because like, even here, it's like I, in my mindset right now, it's like, I don't really want to listen to a lot because I want to do my thing like very unapologetically and just kind of like it be what kind of when I'm writing, when I'm, you know, recording. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, it's, it's also a good thing to do to learn. And I, I need to kind of get back in that habit myself. Yeah, man. Agreed. Well, I love you, brother. Thanks for coming you, on and hanging with me. I'm going to chop this up and get it out there. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm trying to work on my crap, but it's always good to talk to talented, awesome people. And then also, this is just, you know, me seeding a little bit more value into the relationship so I can play ball with you again. Hey, you ain't got to worry about that, son. You ain't got to worry about that, man. I just gotta, I'm, I got to worry about them boom boys, dude. I got to see, they've also sharpened up my uh, trash talking ability a little bit. Oh, yeah. You understand. I, and again, those guys are my family. And I talk about them on the podcast and they're, they're a big part of my life. And, and honestly, I, I reach out to them you know, for insight on music that they're listening to, things that they Absolutely. don't like. I, I'm not very good at, at not liking something because who am I? Like, if it's just not for me. If, if I don't like something, doesn't mean it's not good. It could be great. It's just just not for me. Those guys yeah. are built a little different. They, they're like, nah, man, that's trash. <laughs> oh, I know. I have the yeah. text to prove it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, no, man, that's trash. And, and like, I'll get all these texts. But um, yeah, I've been through the ringer with those guys over the over years. So we got a lot of trash talk in the in the pipeline. And, and again, you're screwed because you're gonna get it the rest of your life now. Oh, I can't wait, dude! I need it. I need it. Like I need to have that that pushing that pull a little bit. Is what I need. <laughs> 
Well, they're going to love this, man. And I love you. Thanks so much for this. And I hope Spotify, man, like you have such a great thing going to, man. I hope that, you know, even with what whatever your vision is with this thing, man, this is what people always, you know, it's like a mob Rashad with, with Jordan back in the day. You know what I mean? It's like that thing of like, obviously. Yeah, but I'm, but I'm a mob Rashad in this. That would make you Jordan. Oh, it would, I'm talking, it would make me Jordan. I, I'm, I'm another <laughs> reporter, my friend. But even my point being, it's like you with all of these artists, right? It's like, that's the gig. That's the thing. It's like, we got to talk to people, do this, do this, do this. Man, there's a reason he kept using him. It's because they were friends. It's because he trusted him. And yeah, someone, like that. someone told me this the other day, and, they, and this is true. You probably find this funny. Um, you know, I got to go to Nashville, and, I, and honestly, I ended up, you know, hanging out with a lot of artists while I was there, which was nice. Uh, one of my friends, and I get somebody from, from Boone and that crew, they were like, man, do, you, do those guys know what you do for a living? I feel like you're just like one of their boys. <laughs> That's my point, though. Yeah. He, still, he still had a job, too, but it didn't, you know, it never got in the way of, the relationship and like dude that is your character man like no matter what you do if you do this you know for forever or if you go and do work at an ice cream shop on san monica boulevard don't matter it's like your character yeah. is what always opens the door for you because you're such a good good dude man we we love you we will we'll do anything that we can do to always make sure you get what you need my friend i know you're the best all right man love you so much man this was awesome Love hey, you, we'll circle back. We'll circle back. You know, anytime oh, dude, you that know, Hal, you know Hal's busy, because I do these every Saturday, and how how was his schedule? Couldn't fit it in today. So I bet he could. You know, he was a little intimidated. You know, he still got that <laughs> leather that leather taste in his mouth. I think he actually tasted my fingers a few times when I feel like when I was right right here. It kind of accidentally went in his nose a little bit. Oh, here we go. Here we go. All right, man, you're the best. I'll talk to you soon. Hey, tell your brother I said what up. What'd you oh, love you, man. See you. Love you.